to uh, remind you all because it was like a uh, week back we have we were discussing about bifurcation right so we started uh, the very introduction to this subject of bifurcation and uh, bifurcation as we understood in the last class uh, or just to quickly brush up uh, or remind, uh, remind ourselves that what we discussed is that uh, in one line the definition was that when uh, when a fixed point or fixed points they change their nature of stability or uh, quantitatively they, they qualitatively they have they face some changes in the dynamic so those phenomena we called bifurcation and we we uh, called those particular parameter values where these things uh, happen as uh, bifurcation points yes so we uh, started our discussion with the very uh, introduction to uh, the, the most well known bifurcation which is saddle knot so the name of bifurcation if you uh, Uh, understand it comes uh, basically it is defined uh, from the perspective of uh, creating uh, branches right so uh, we know we know that uh, we have seen the trees and uh, uh, how their branches bifurcate and uh, give, uh, create uh, smaller branches so basically you can, uh, can can you see my screen yes yes ma'am so you can you can uh, simply imagine that uh, at the bifurcation point uh, as we have seen in the previous example let us consider the r plus x square example that we took in the last class so i guess that uh, simple parabola and how we got um, uh, different kind of fixed points that uh, you you have in your notebook right now so what you can think of is that uh, in 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 the case of that uh, equation of r plus x square uh, we did not have any any fixed point to start with right no fixed points at all and then suddenly at a point after a point we got uh, as if two possibilities two possibilities opened up at a particular point at, at a particular value uh, of uh, r hmm. at a particular value of r where in the, throughout this branch we had uh, not not a single uh, fixed point existing right so let us consider the case for r greater than 0 there and then suddenly after a certain value of r you got two branches of dynamics that can happen where one at one side you had a possibility of getting an unstable fixed point other side you had a stable fixed point or uh, something like that right so uh from that idea the name bifurcation uh, comes into the picture so today we will uh, dive a little bit further into the idea of uh, bifurcation and we will uh, study more about saddle node bifurcation so saddle node is uh, as as we were uh, discussing in the last class it is kind of the most common uh, bifurcation that we will uh, see uh, in in this course so uh without much ado let us uh, just uh, uh talk a bit more uh, about about uh, the uh, saddle node bifurcation so we we were uh, we decided this just up to this point where uh, we uh, derived uh, the situation we, we understood the situation from graphical perspective uh, so let us uh, move on and uh, see that how many different ways i can interpret this the same scenario how many different ways i can interpret uh, this okay so uh, one of the uh, very uh, simple uh, ways to represent this uh, whatever we are seeing here is if i draw a curve uh, where uh, x the solutions that i am getting the fixed fixed points that i am getting those will be in y axis and x axis would be the parameters okay so let us see what i am uh, saying here here uh, if i consider the same example here if i consider uh, the same example then uh, dx dt is equal to r plus x square okay so uh, here uh, if i uh, look at the solutions that i have for this equation okay or, or let us consider uh, something a little bit different and r minus x square also you can consider that is also a similar equation that can that gives gives rise to similar uh, 
dynamics. So whichever whichever you prefer, you can uh, choose any one of them. And now, if I if I uh, try to see that how that uh, fixed point, the value of the fixed point that I'm seeing uh, is uh, changing with the value of R, then I can draw a diagram, a graph. As uh, I have already told you before, this is this is a very much uh, pictorial and graphical subject, and it is more conceptual. So we can it is easier easier to understand sometimes if I consider some diagrams. So if I draw a diagram where the fixed points, the values of fixed points will be in x-axis, and the parameter will be in y-axis. So this particular diagram has a name. We call it bifurcation diagram. Okay, bifurcation. Diagram. Okay. So bifurcation diagram is nothing but where your parameter will be lying in the x-axis, and you are studying that how the fixed point that I am seeing, the fixed points are changing with uh, this this value of the parameter. So if I want to draw this uh, thing, then uh, what will I get? Uh, so I can see that uh, the fixed points. If I only consider the fixed point, and you remember the previous scenario. Then we know that for r less than zero, we had two fixed points, right? If you remember, right? For r less than zero in the previous example, in the negative side of the axis, we had two fixed points. At r equal to zero, these two fixed points uh, like collided into each other, and beyond that, we did not have any fixed points, so to say. So I guess you remember uh, those uh, parabolas that we we drew in the last class, right? so we had one stable one unstable here a half stable here and no fixed points there right so this was the scenario for r less than 0 r equal to 0 and r greater than 0 so this was the picture that that where we stopped in the last class so now if i uh, ask you to just to draw this diagram where i will have these solutions that i am having in the x axis uh, the points where it cut on the x axis And uh, the parameter in the y-axis. Then what do I get? So I get two branches basically, right? So how? What are these solutions? Can anyone tell me what are the solutions that I am going to get for r less than zero? Here, solutions means equate this to zero, right? Uh, so equate under. this to zero and find out the fixed points, right? So r itself is negative now. That means If you take x square equal to minus r, and then you figure out that x is equal to plus minus the root over of minus r, and r itself is negative, so this quantity is not an imaginary quantity. This is a real quantity, right? Are we convinced about that? Let us now deal with the problem in a more mathematical sense. Okay, is it okay? so this is not an imaginary quantity this is this is what we have is a real quantity are we convinced about that for r less than 0 yes no any 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 doubts is it okay yes sir yes ma'am okay so we have two solutions right one is plus root over minus r and one is minus root over minus r so that means for different values of r say r is equal to 1 2 3 negative ha huh? negative values i am considering minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 you will have different values for this quantity x star right so those values i will plot in this axis those values i am going to plot the fixed points the x stars so to say i am going to plot in x uh, y axis and x axis would be the parameter okay so this is kind of uh, a root over of minus r so the diagram that you expect it should also be parabolic in nature right so the there have been two branches because of the two solutions that i have so one of the solutions will be the plus side of the graph right something like this 
and the other solution will be in the other way like this is it okay yes ma'am okay is this diagram clear to everybody so now uh, one thing to note here would be that i have drawn one of them as dashed point that's with dashed uh, uh, line another one with a continuous line right so if you see this picture from there you can understand that how, why this is happening and we can also achieve the same thing with uh, linear stability analysis as well so there are two solutions one is on the positive side of x so here the positive side of x was in this side and you can see that solution was unstable right similarly for negative values that we had here in this diagram there you had the stable solution so this dashed line basically signifies that this this, uh, this branch is the unstable branch and this branch the other branch that we have here is the stable branch of the dynamics so that signifies that for different values of r what is the value of the stable fixed point that's it okay are we getting this clearly so we yes, can achieve the no. same thing yes yeah good so we have we can achieve the same thing if you are having problem to understand that which branch will be stable and which branch will be unstable let us take another example and do it in terms of linear stability right so if we can do the same thing in terms of linear stability as well so let us consider the uh, other example that i was suggesting the other example where you just have a negative sign sitting in between so let us consider that this time dx dt is equal to r minus x square okay so this is the uh, equation that we have now let us deal with it completely mathematically so the first step would be to figure out the fixed points and we know that for that i have to equate it to zero and this straight forward gives me x star is equal to plus minus root over of r so we have these two solutions let us imagine that we are just dealing with this in terms of mathematics and not in terms of graphs okay so we have two uh, fixed points okay when when can i have two fixed points only if r is greater than equal to 0 then i have two fixed points now if r is less than 0 here i have imaginary numbers which are not real so i cannot have any fixed point there right so by now you have understood i guess that the entire di the discussion that we are doing are for real variables and that is why no no imaginary there is no room for accommodating any imaginary solutions in our picture Right? we are only considering the positive and negative side of the x axis and no uh, complex solutions there because all these quantities that we will finally model are all real quantities and there is no place for imaginary numbers there so only for r greater than equal to 0 you will have a solution not one but two solutions here and for r less than equal to 0 you have none no solution right fine so we have now now let us consider the second step linear stability so for linear stability we know what we have to compute is f prime x at x equal to x star that is what we do right that is what we have learned so far that uh, for computing that one fixed point is stable or unstable we have to uh, do the linear stability analysis in terms of f prime x so we take this entire quantity right and we call that fx right we call that fx and then in terms of that fx we figure out what f prime x is plug in the values of the fixed point to see it is stable or unstable so do it do it quickly it is like a one minute job do it and tell me which point do you find as stable and which one is unstable here plus r is stable and minus r is unstable very good so what we see simply is that x star is plus root r and this one becomes a stable solution right because f prime of that x star is minus 2 x star and you can put the value in and you can see that it is becoming positive or negative right okay? depends on the sign so we can figure out from there is it clear to everybody so x star is equal to minus root r would be unstable in this case okay now this is the picture now suppose i ask you uh, the question is something like this that 
uh, I give you this dynamical equation and I ask you that uh, using linear stability analysis, figure out the bifurcation diagram for this dynamical system. Okay, the question would be something like this, that this is the dynamical equation for a system. Using linear stability analysis, figure out the bifurcation diagram for this system. Okay, so what do I have to do? I have to take the equation, I have to figure out the fixed points, I have to do the linear stability and see that which one is stable or which one is unstable. The last job left is to draw the bifurcation diagram. So for bifurcation diagram, as we have just discussed, for bifurcation diagram, what we take is that x star would be in the y-axis and r or the parameter, whatever parameter you are dealing with will be in the x-axis and you plot the branches, right? So there are two branches now. One is x star is equal to root r, one is x star is equal to minus uh, of root r and you know which one is stable and which one is unstable. You draw these two branches, the unstable branch would be marked with a dashed line, okay? And the stable one will be marked with a continuous line. Is it clear to everybody? So this is a very important concept of bifurcation diagram we are discussing. And I need all of you to, uh, I mean, have no, no lacuna there. So let us just make it everything very clear. Okay, so do you understand the difference between the graphical uh, picture that we are creating before and this picture of bifurcation diagram, right? If you are asked to draw the bifurcation diagram, you have to draw a diagram like this, where you have x star in the y-axis and you have uh, r in the x-axis. Clear? Yes, ma'am. So uh, this is it. This is uh, the concept of bifurcation diagram. Now uh, there are uh, several uh, names for saddle load. This for the, the bifurcation diagram that we are discussing right now, as we have uh, mentioned, that uh, here the, the nature, the, the very nature of how you will understand that it's a saddle load bifurcation or not. The nature is that you will have two fixed points uh, situated, which are almost like symmetric and they will collide into each other and they will vanish at a certain point, okay? So from this uh, uh, idea and also from the uh, nature of the bifurcation diagram we have, so you can see that uh, the bifurcation diagram that we have has a fold-like structure, a fold-like structure. So from that, this uh, bifurcation, uh, saddle road bifurcation uh, is also called fold bifurcation. So these are like uh, meaning of the same thing, same uh, thing, the saddle node bifurcation. It is called full bifurcation. It is also called turning point bifurcation sometimes okay? because uh, the at a point there is a turning of the graph because of that fold, this fold that we have here. Okay? For that, it is also called a fold bifurcation or a turning point bifurcation. Okay, so I guess now the idea of uh, saddle load bifurcation is uh, clear. So, in a certain sense, the examples uh, like uh, r plus x square or r minus x square, these are the representative of all saddle load bifurcations, as we are we we said in the last class. So, they are kind of the prototypes of any bifurcation that we can have, any saddle load bifurcation that we can have. And eventually, you can map uh, any of these bifurcations to the equation, the mother equation. Or the prototype equation as we have said before so i guess you remember uh, we, we we dealt with an example of uh, this this example right r minus x uh, minus e to the power uh, minus x we dealt with that in the last class and we understood that that is also has a similar nature like the saddle node bifurcation where you can just imagine that the entire picture has been rotated so we, have, we were considering a picture where the parabola was was sitting like this and the axis were like that and if you rotate this entire picture a little bit, you have a similar kind of diagram which we have here in case of uh, r minus uh, x minus to the power minus x. But you can also, uh, with a with a like uh, two lines algebra, you can uh, just establish that from this equation you can also get the mother equation or the prototype equation, which are called the normal forms of uh, of this uh, bifurcation. So what do we have to do to get uh, an equation like r minus x square or r plus x square from here? 
you just expand the a to the power minus x, right? You expand it, and you will see that the x terms get cancelled out, and we only get uh, terms from x square and higher order, right? So uh, you can uh, can you do that? Like in, in in one minute, you can achieve that, I guess. So just take the example like this, uh, an equation like this. and our job is to reduce it to normal form so when i ask you that uh, suppose this is the dynamical equation of a system this is the dynamical equation of a system reduce it to the normal form okay so if i ask you to do that what you have to do is if it is saddle node bifurcation then this equation should give us something like r minus x square or r plus x square uh, considering uh, you can change uh, you can consider different constants or you can consider different variables a little bit but the resultant would be something like this so these two equations are the prototypes or the normal form okay normal forms of saddle node bifurcation okay so uh, uh, can we do that can you do that i guess you will very easily uh, you can achieve that right uh, so we just change this to something like that if i ask you we just expand this to the power minus x So see what I what are you getting and how your R is changing. What is your new R now? Are you getting my question? Yeah, ma'am. R minus one minus six. R minus one. Very good. Very good. So what you have to do? You just expand it, right? You just expand it. R minus x minus e to the power minus six. That was the equation uh, with which we uh, we started. So just expand it a little bit. R minus x minus then expand it to the power x. X square by two factorial and and the other higher higher terms, and we see that the x gets cancelled. So we have R minus one minus x square by two plus dot dot with a leading order of x square, right? So this is kind of the same algebraic form of R minus x square if you consider. Uh, a little bit different variable than x and a different constant than r right is is this idea clear to everybody the idea of normal form and how to reduce them to normal form yes, yes ma'am okay okay very good so i guess uh, this is the basic idea of the saddle node bifurcation that we were discussing in the last class and now i can give you any example any equation one variable equation and you, you will be able to tell me that uh, there is a bifurcation or not that is the first question second is what is the bifurcation point then you point out the exact value of the parameter where this where something is interesting is happening if i ask you to reduce it to it to the normal form i guess you can do that as well and finally i can ask you to draw the bifurcation diagram where you have to plot x star versus r okay so these are the typical questions that we face if i we are we dealing with any uh, system uh, which has some bifurcation so from the saddle node let us move on to the next uh, very important uh, bifurcation which is called trans critical bifurcation okay so you will see that how that is a different trans critical bifurcation okay so trans critical bifurcation is basically something where uh, in saddle node you saw na that a new fixed point emerged or a fixed point vanished at a certain point so that is not going to happen in trans critical in trans critical what we see is that a fixed point was there at and it changes its nature of stability okay so an ideal example with a normal form that we if we say that is the simplest equation that gives uh, rise to this kind of a dynamics is this x x dot or dx dt is given by rx minus x square okay so the equation is rx minus x square can you see it clearly yes okay yes. so rx minus x square let us if if you if we just uh, proceed with uh, this equation then uh, if i again draw the same graphs that will help us to understand that how the solutions of this equation changes uh, if i if i uh, change the value of r okay so the goal of bifurcation always remember it depends on the value of r 
So let us take uh, here also clearly you can see that uh, something interesting is going to happen at r equal to zero. So let us see what happens for r less than zero, r equal to zero, and r greater than zero. Okay. So if r less than zero, what kind of a graph do I have? Down what is parabola. Yeah, it's a parabola upside down, right? An upside down parabola because we have minus sign sitting here, right? So the parabola will be like this, upside down. But how many points on the x-axis uh, should it cut? That is the question. Okay. Can we draw this graph? So we are plotting x dot or fx or dx dt, whatever you call in this axis, x in the x axis for now. Okay, we're trying to see that how this function behaves with x. So for r equal to zero, what do we have? Let us consider the simplest situation. If r equal to zero, then there is no x term, no linear term, right? We only have x, x dot is equal to minus x square. So what kind of a graph is that? Something like this? Is it clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now let us consider the other two. So it is always going to be a parabola because we have this x squared term sitting here. But we also have existence of another solution, right? So x equal to zero is always a solution of this equation, if I see. So x is equal to zero will be a point where this graph always cuts x-axis. That is for sure, right? The other solution is x equal to r. So if r is negative, then that solution is somewhere here, x equal to r on the negative side. And if r is positive, then that solution is somewhere here on the positive side. Okay. So we have to intuitively, step by step, develop our notion that how this function is going to look like. Because not always we will have a plotting software for us which will plot it. So sometimes it is important to have a notion of the function. So what we see here clearly is that x is equal to 0 and x is equal to r are the two points where the graph cuts the x axis. Okay. Now if r is equal to negative, then that value will be somewhere here on the negative side. If r is equal to positive, then that value is somewhere here on the positive side of x axis. Okay. So the graph that I expect, now I know three things about that. First is it is going to be like a parabola. Second is it is always going to cut at x equal to zero. And third, sometimes it is cutting on the positive side, sometimes it is cutting on the negative side of uh, the x axis. So the graph, as far as I understand, should be something like this or something like this. So if I draw this, now you tell me that what is your idea about this? Can we interpret this from the equation that we have? Are we facing any trouble to understand that why that graph should look like this? No, ma'am. It's okay? Okay. Yes, ma'am. So once I draw the graph, we know the drill, right? Now we know the drill. We have to figure out the velocities and which one is stable and which one is unstable from the velocities. We can do that. We can also proceed simply for uh, linear stability also. So which, whichever way you prefer, we can do that. So here, if you are comfortable with velocity, we'll quickly understand that which one is stable and which one is unstable in this picture or in that picture. Okay? So what about this solution that we have here? If we are comfortable with velocities, we can say that the velocity is positive here, right? So this will be a stable or unstable? Stable. Stable. Very good. Very good. So this is stable. And this is unstable, right? It is because it is moving away. It is moving towards. And it is moving away also on this side. Clear? Now here, what is happening? Yeah, here, which one is stable and which one is unstable? Origin is unstable. 
origin is unstable right origin is unstable here and the other one x is equal to r is the stable point now very very important okay so try to just feel the idea feel the entire picture that what is happening so the solution remains same x is equal to r but the same solution is sometimes unstable and sometimes stable so this must be the half stable case right this must be the half stable case okay i'll stop here for a moment and let you just uh, i mean comprehend the entire picture what is going on so this at least notionally i guess you can understand that this is somewhat different from saddle node isn't it in saddle node we completely lost fixed points at a at a particular value of r right there was no solution at a point and then suddenly two solutions emerged but here we consistently have all our solutions present but something interesting is happening at r is equal to 0 there is a switch there is a switch of stability between the origin and the solution x is equal to r are we appreciating the difference are we uh, okay with the difference that i am trying to point out yes ma'am yes okay very good so this is kind of an exchange of stability so if, if someone asks you that what is what is the uh, most important feature of uh, transferential bifurcation that makes it different from other bifurcations you have to say this that there i see an exchange of stabilities be between the fixed points okay they switch they just switch their stability there so uh, without much delay let us just we have not much time left let us quickly draw the bifurcation diagram and we will uh, stop at that point we we'll start from this point uh, later in the next class so if i want to draw the bifurcation diagram here as we know what will be in my x axis and what will be in my y axis if i want to draw the bifurcation diagram let us just remind ourselves once again so for the bifurcation diagram x axis would be the parameter okay x axis is always the parameter okay and y axis is the stable points that i am seeing so y axis is my x x star now you tell me what should be how should the diagram look like how many solutions do i have two x is equal to 0 x is equal to r these are the two solutions that i have for this equation right the equation is x dot is equal to rx minus x square okay what kind of the what kind of the graphs do i have for these two equations straight line straight lines x is equal to 0 is uh, x is x is equal to 0 is axis right the this axis this is x equal to 0 because this is x i am plotting this in the vertical axis now right so x is equal to 0 is this axis is it clear to everybody and x is equal to r would be a, a line like this okay doubts no ma'am so now stability right let us consider the picture that you have just look at the picture that you have in your copy now and tell me that which part i have i should draw in dash dash line and which part should i make a continuous line for r less than 0 which one was stable and which one was unstable for r less than 0 this one was stable right x equal to 0 this one the stable solution for r less than 0 so for r less than 0 this branch is the solid branch and this branch is the dashed line the unstable branch so this one is the unstable branch but this one is the stable branch was the stable branch when r was less than 0 as soon as i cross this point r is equal to 0 they switch their stability right so this part of the graph now becomes dashed
right and this line becomes continuous what do you think about it doubts understand clearly you can draw the bifurcation diagram now for the idea of bifurcation diagram okay is it clear this is the bifurcation diagram for transcritical bifurcation so always in case of transcritical bifurcation you will see something like this two lines two branches two curves at one point they just switch their stability and the continuous one becomes dashed and the dashed one becomes continuous okay so i will uh, i i want to stop at this point and i want to uh, let you just uh, absorb whatever we have discussed so far okay and if you have any questions you can ask me right now uh, or we will continue on uh, the same discussions where we learned several important uh, factors several important things today and above all we learned how to draw bifurcation diagrams which is a very very important thing that is related to nonlinear dynamics so any person uh, if you tell someone i had a course on nld they will ask you that uh, have you learned about bifurcation diagrams or not okay that is that is kind of the heart of the entire uh, subject so uh, i hope that you get you got the idea of it and now you can uh, draw the diagrams bifurcation diagrams as you uh, face a new system with the, with somewhat a new dynamic Okay. Uh, if we don't have any further questions, we will uh, stop at this point.